engine performance one test 12 I'm gonna walk through this one with you so you don't get smacked around quite so bad by it and what you come up with on oxygen sensor uh, cross counts can be the only determined using a what yeah so you can't you can't really tell what the cross count number is right I mean uh, what is a cross count what are you talking about uh, how many times it switches from riches to lean rich to lean right yeah. in a given amount of time Basically, a lot of the stuff you're going to see is, you know, something over time, you know, that's what we're talking about here. Even when you're talking about misfires and stuff, they want to know uh, within a 200 RPM or a 1,000 RPM window, they're always looking at how many of these events happen over time. You know, that gives you an idea of how active it is. Sometimes you'll get a code that'll tell you that you got a sluggish oxygen sensor, and that means that it hadn't seen enough cross count. Cross counts is a GM thing, though, they like that. Technician A says oxygen sensors can be tested using a test ladder, a dwell meter, or a scan tool. Hmm. Uh, technician B says conditions can occur, cause the oxygen sensor to be fooled and give a false lean or a false rich signal to the PCM. B is the only guy that's right there because you cannot really test an oxygen sensor with a test lat. I will tell you that you can test the heater. Uh, what I like to do is take an old oxygen sensor and cut the terminal off of it and the two wires that are the same color on an oxygen sensor are typically the heater wires. I cut the old connector off the sensor itself and I hook a little light bulb in there and I plug it in like it was an oxygen sensor and I start it up and if that light lights up I know that there's heater power there. If there's not any, if it's throwing you a code for a heater, somebody's already used the heater's burned out on the sensor whenever you see that. But if the heater's not burned out and there's a wiring problem leading down there, you can find that uh, by doing what I was just talking about. Uh, which of these describes exceptional oxygen, uh, excuse me, acceptable oxygen sensor cross counts? That was number three. Did you find that? Uh, it was eight to 10 at 2,000. Eight to 10 at 2,000 RPM. You want it to be pretty active and it's gonna be more active when you're on the throttle a little bit. Uh, uh, a PO 131 diagnostic trouble code is being discussed. Technician A says an exhaust leak upstream of the uh, HO2S bank one oxygen sensor could be the cause. Technician B says an extremely rich air fuel mixture could be the cause. It's going to be A. If it's got an exhaust leak upstream of an oxygen sensor, it basically can, there's actually negative pulses in the exhaust stream and it can pull air in there. And when it sees oxygen, that voltage is going down and it will give you false, it'll, it'll give a false uh, lean Ooh. signal and it will cause it to drive the fuel trims high and it will make it run rich. So if you've got an exhaust leak upstream of the oxygen sensor, it can actually make the car run rich. Doesn't seem like that'd be all that much of a big deal, does it? Um, all right, I'm gonna go over here and turn on this air. Hot in here. It's an off. Keep going, John. Don't quit. All right, now then. Okay. Um, a PO 132 diagnostic trouble codes being discussed. Technician A says defective uh, heated oxygen sensor could be the cause. Technician B says heated O2S signal wire shorted to ground could be the cause. Uh, what do you think? Hmm. Technician A typically is going to be right, right there. You know, that's a, pretty much what's going to be there. Um, oxygen sensors uh, of different kind. When I was, when we first started fooling with oxygen sensors, we would have problems with sometimes they would uh, go go flat for a while, and then they'd come back to life. And you would pull the uh, trouble codes, and you would see that it had a lean code, uh, and it, it would say uh, rich adaptive limit, lean adaptive limit. I mean, it would go both ways because it would go, the thing would uh, think it could, it would think, the PCM would think it could pay attention to the oxygen sensor. Oxygen sensor would all of a sudden just start lying and go rich. I mean, go lean and it would drive it, uh, fuel trims high and then it would come back alive and it would say, oh no, now my fuel trims are too high. And then it would <laughs> go back the other way. And so you'd have all kinds of crazy codes. And I had seen that. You, you might even see the thing acting normally when you go in there but they fail intermittently, you know, so usually when I, when I would put an oxygen sensor on there if I saw that. Um, something else I would do if I had one that was running bad in the olden days, not so much now, uh, one of the first things I'd do is put an oxygen sensor on it to make sure that signal was good and clean, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, I'd look at the meter. When, uh, I, here's something else I would do. There was a Chrysler that came in there one time that was uh, running rich and reading lean, right? 
So I, it was a, sing, a one wire oxygen sensor was getting to the ground on an exhaust manifold. And so what I did was I unplugged the oxygen sensor and I grabbed a hold of the little wire with my finger, you know, got my got it where it was. I, mean, I actually went into it so I could, I was touching it with my finger. And I would take my finger and lick it and I'd touch the positive battery terminal and feed a little false voltage into the PCM and it started correcting the fuel trim. And I said, well, that's a bad oxygen sensor there. And that was before fuel trim days and uh, you could, you know, you could no scan tool that really was all that good and all that kind of stuff. But, but they had oxygen sensors in. Um, let's see. Uh, when the concentration of oxygen on the exhaust side of the thimble is low, which is a rich exhaust, a voltage of what is generated between the electrodes? That's going to be 0 0.6 to 1.0. Because you're reading between, you know, real close to zero and up to almost a volt. Usually it's about, you know, 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 and all that so it's going to be higher than that now i've seen these chryslers the way that they were set up uh, you know starting back in the early 90s they would actually sometimes hang up at about six tenths of a volt and that's as low as they would go and the engine controller would start trying to go do crazy stuff with the fuel trims trying to fix that and it would cause it to buck and jump buck and jump buck and jump and then it would go into open loop and it would clean up its act and then if you looked at the fuel trims on the screen, it would look like a sawtooth pattern, real, I'm talking about real bad sawtooth pattern that was happening instantaneously. And I've seen an uh, oxygen sensor cause some of them dodge pickups and stuff just to almost quit running because of that. You know, you just get where you get back to drive them. And I was driving one belonged to the president of the college. I cut the wire, one of the oxygen sensors, when I determined that was wrong because I was looking at the scan tool. And I grounded the wire that was feeding the signal to the uh, PCM, and that problem never happened again while that wire was grounded. If you just cut the wire, sometimes there'll be trace voltages floating in and out of them <laughs> that will cause it to do stupid stuff, you know. So if you want to take the oxygen sensor out of the loop, just unplug it, it ain't good enough. You got to ground that wire that is uh, going to the sensor, I mean, just feeding the sensor signal in there. Um, that's old school stuff, though. A, a large amount of oxygen in the exhaust causes the O2 sensor voltage to to do what? Does it have low voltage, high voltage, false readings, abnormal readings? Um, What's it smelling? We just got through saying if it's rich, the voltage goes high, so which way is it going to go? Left. Bingo. What is the post or downstream oxygen sensor measure? The one after the catalytic converter. That's why they call it post. Post is after. What do you got? Uh, it's going to be the amount of H2 behind the yeah, well, H2O is water. The amount of oxygen I mean, behind the yeah, you know, the amount of oxygen behind the catalytic converter. Uh, yeah, and that's they it's measuring oxygen uh, story. I mean, it's measuring the catalytic converter's ability to store oxygen is what it's measuring. If the catalytic converter gets where it can't store oxygen, it ain't no good no more. Uh, when the oxygen sensor begins to produce a usable uh, signal, the PCM or, uh, PCM enters what? Closed loop. Yeah, see, you knew that one. You knew some of these off the top of your head. Judio, what's up? I'm afraid to turn my truck off. Um, I don't know if the battery is bad or if the alternator or whatever, but I've had to. Are you recording? It ain't a big deal. I've had to um, jump it off uh -huh. the last three times I've started Ooh, it. Okay. So, can I? Yeah, pull it into that first bay there. Okay. And, uh, and we'll okay. look at it. And I'll leave it to you. It's going on the class. We'll make it work for it later. I'm going to cake. Huh? Here on the table. I brought them a cake. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, a primary use of the PCM for the oxygen sensor is to do what? Why does it, what does it use the oxygen sensor for? Think about it. Is it looking at engine temperature? Assisting cold startup. Heck, the oxygen sensor ain't even working then, right? Exhaust volume. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. Help measure exhaust temperature. Not on that one. I mean, not most of. Them. What about fine tuning the air fuel mixture? That's pretty much what you're doing with that. That's what your fuel trims are about. Um, upstream and downstream O2 sensors are used to measure what? If they've got one on both sides of the catalyst, measuring catalyst efficiency. That's what I was just talking about earlier. Um, Okay, number 12, is, it, uh, is it, it is possible to test a heated O2 sensor without running the engine? That is actually true, believe it or not. Um, 
And as a matter of fact, I've got a uh, that little test stand I got out there and we're put all cut off a part of a catalytic converter, screw an oxygen sensor in there, you can take a torch. Oh, and yeah. yeah, you remember when we seen me do that and you get a signal from that, you know? All right. So when the vehicle's in closed loop, the following post converter uh, HO2 oxygen sensor scope pattern activity is seen. Look at this scope pattern, oxygen sensor after the converter. Okay, this is what the pattern is they're talking about right there. See that, that long line there? All right, what are they talking about? What is it? The one after the converter, remember this, is supposed to be lazy. Now, it won't always be that lazy, but it's supposed to be pretty lazy. With the vehicle in closed loop, the following post-converter H02S uh, pattern activity is seen. Okay, that was that one right there. What does that mean? Number 14. That's typically a bad converter. You're typically, if it looks like it's mirroring the front sensor, it'll be pretty surprising if you haven't already thrown a PO420. A wideband oxygen sensor needs to be heated to what operating temperature? Hmm. No, that's the old kind. The wide one's 1400 degrees. Remember that. It's got to go to 1400 degrees. You know what the temperature your catalyst usually runs? No, you don't have any way of knowing, do you? I mean, really. Well, if you've got a scan tool on it, you'd be probably surprised to note that on the uh, the catalytic converter usually runs like three or four thousand degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really, really hot in there. You know, that's necessary for it to do its job. I hate it when the screw gets loose on my glasses because sometimes the lens falls out. Yeah. That makes you look like a nerd, doesn't it, when you tape up your glasses? All right, um, let's see. Uh, two internal chambers of a dual-cell wideband oxygen sensor include what? That's a sort of a hard question there, unless you've read up on it. Air reference and diffusion are the ones you're going to get there with. And the exhaust is rich. The PCM applies what kind of current to the pump cell? That would be negative current to the pump cell. And when it's lean, it's obviously going to do the opposite, which would be positive current. It's going to be applied to the pump cell. All right, let's keep moving here. A dual cell wideband oxygen sensor can be tested using what? Look at those three. Could, could you use an oscilloscope, scan tool, voltmeter? You could use them all, couldn't you? All of the above. Uh, some hybrid electric vehicles. In some hybrid electric vehicles, the wideband oxygen sensor can cause PCM to enter closed loop. And what's the answer to that one? Uh, by the time the vehicle reaches 60, within 10 seconds of engine startup, as soon as the engine starts, or within two minutes. I mean, that's, that's actually, believe it or not, as soon as the engine starts on that one. Uh, they're all about, you know, sniffing that thing right away then. A uh, conventional oxygen sensor has a reading of 900 millivolts on a multimeter. What does that indicate? Think about what we've been saying now. Uh, High voltage is what? Rich. That's right. So it's close to a volt, right? Mm -hmm. 900 millivolts. You take a volt, break it up into a thousand parts, you got millivolts. It's going to be rich. That's right. Um, let's see. A conventional oxygen sensor heater keeps it, uh, and conventional means, you know, not the wide band, keeps it where? where what did you just say? 600, 600 degrees. Um, one advantage of a planar type oxygen sensor is that what? It lights off quicker. Uh, it gets faster. I mean, it gets, it gets to where. The engine controller wants to know, as soon as it can trust that oxygen sensor, it starts looking at it and it starts adjusting fuel trim. We want to go into closed loop as quick as we can, basically. When the air-fuel ratio is expressed as lambda, a lambda number of less than one indicates what? <laughs> Rich. If it goes down from, you know, lambda is actually, they're giving a value to the 14.7 to 1 and they're calling it 1.0. See, when it goes rich, the, it drifts low, and when it's lean, it goes high. So there's, when you see a lambda reading, you'll see that on a scan tool. Mm -hmm. So just remember, lambda, the ideal is one, and when you go down, you're going rich. When you're going up, you're going lean. So just think about that. If you see, you see one of you're probably going to see one. Uh, it, I mean, sooner than you think. 
And so, you know, if you don't know that, looking at the numbers on a scan tool when you don't know what the numbers mean is useless. You know what I mean? It's like looking, they go to the doctor's office and you see all this stuff on the screen up there, all these numbers, all that kind of stuff. What the heck is this? You know, I don't know. I mean, he knows, but you don't, you know, um, unless you've read up on it or something. Uh, this stuff right here, you get really good at this if you read everything you can find about it, right? Um, let me see. Uh, technician A says a, yeah. Technician A, technician A says a wide band oxygen sensor, also called a lean air fuel, uh, can detect lean air, excuse me, <laughs> can detect air fuel ratios uh, as rich as 10 to 1 or as lean as 23 to 1. Technician B says a conventional oxygen sensor cannot detect the exact air fuel mixture. And that's number 25. Let's see, both of those guys are right. The heater circuit in a wide band oxygen sensor heats the sensor to about. Wasn't that about the A one? Uh, yeah, A, 12 to 1400 degrees, you remembered. Good deal. A single cell wide band oxygen sensor may also be called what? Single cell wide band oxygen sensor could be called an air fuel ratio sensor. You know, Toyota likes to use those too. When the air fuel ratio Ration, <laughs> ration it says, ratio is expressed in lambda. A lambda of number one means 14.7 to one air fuel ratio. That's what I was saying earlier. Uh, number 29, if voltage from the heater circuit bleeds into the Nernst cell, uh, the mill will not come on, that's false. And finally, number 30, a wideband oxygen sensor can draw how much current uh, in amperes. Believe it or not, eight to 10 amps. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Okay. I'll give you a little hand with that one there.